Hi and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about how to leverage your visibility as a human design line one investigator. So regardless of whether you have this within your profile within human design or not, I do think I absolutely believe that if you are in the business of working with people in community, in relationships with people, as clients, uh, you have business partners, you have investors. Uh, I mean, come on, that it applies to all of us, right? It's really important that if you believe in human design and you're interested in human design, that you do learn more about human design because what's really important is that, especially when you're working with clients, that you understand their human design. So if you have a line one in your human design profile, then this video is for you. And if you don't have a line one in your human design profile, this video is also for you because I'm sure that you will know someone who has a line one in their human design profile. So if you've followed me for a while, you'll know that as a human design visibility coach, mentor, and consultant, I use human design to really leverage uh, the clients that I work with. I use human design to leverage their human, their visibility and uh, their confidence. If you have never heard of human design before, human design is an incredible tool to be able to build relationships, to be able to create success, to manifest, to build business, and you can apply it to anything. When you look at your human design profile and your type and your strategy and all the different, I can never say that word, all the different elements of human design, you will be able to apply it to building relationships, to romantic relationships and friendships. You can apply it to raising children. You can apply it to your career, to leadership. But I always use it to help my clients be able to leverage their visibility and to be able to, pre to um, present themselves and to be able to position themselves as thought leaders, to be credible, to have presence and impact and to make a difference in this world because they're entrepreneurial women that want to go out there and want to be more visible and want their message to be heard. And sometimes that's quite difficult for them to do so because of various situ situations and circumstances. But a lot of that comes from our conditioning because we're often... Uh, in the business of comparing ourselves to other people and then beating ourselves up when we don't live up to that self-imposed expectation that we put on ourselves because we believe that we need to be like other people in order to be successful. And actually what human design does is it helps us to come back to ourselves and to understand ourselves more deeply and to realise that we don't need to be like anyone else. We just need to be ourselves, authentically ourselves. And then if we have conviction in the way that we speak and we really believe that the message that we're going out with and we deeply understand our clients and who we want to attract in or any of the other opportunities that we want to attract in then it becomes a lot easier for us so we have our human design types generator manifesting generator projector reflector and manifester and then sitting underneath that we have our human design profiles so our profiles are made up of two numbers that you will find in your human design chart so when you you look up your chart you will see that it's kind of it's like written like an equation so it'll be one number forward slash another number and that is our human design profile and it's very interesting when we look at our human design profile and we look at how we can use that to leverage our visibility very very interesting around um, not only being visible but building relationships and just really going out there and being able to create uh, the success that we want to create in our lives, whatever way that success looks for you. 
So there are six lines within human design, six numbers within human design, and we each have two numbers uh, within our profile. And if you've got absolutely no idea what I'm talking about and you'd like to find out more about your human design, you can always go over to my website, abigailrebecca.com, and then just look up at the top and it says, look up my chart, look up my 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 uh look at my design and you can click on there and you can download your human design for free it's all free all of this is free human design is absolutely free you can google anything you can google anything these days you can google it and you can look up your human design and you can find out about your human design profile but <sighs> If you are really uh, serious about building your credibility, your authority, you want to be seen as an expert in your field, you want to create more visibility within your business, then you might want to listen to what I have to say. Because I've worked for over 25 years coaching and mentoring women who are in senior leadership positions, who are business founders and um and entrepreneurs and business owners, helping them to be more visible, helping them to be more confidently expressed. Because I talk specifically about human design aligned to visibility. And that's why I wanted to talk about your human design profile today. So human design line one, it's often known as investigator. If you listen to some other human design experts, they might call it researcher because you definitely are a researcher. You love to go and find out about things. You like to do your due, due, due diligence. You like to investigate things. And what does this do for you? Well, it makes you a subject matter expert. Do you know how valuable you are as a speaker or as a guest or as an entrepreneur to be a subject matter expert? How many times have you written article, uh, read articles and the person that, is, that has written that article is quoting other articles or the quoting facts or figures? They are backing up what they say with their research. Well, they might not be a, line, a human design line one. They might just be doing this because they do want to leverage their credibility, which absolutely makes sense. But if you have a line one within your human design, this is like your zone of genius. This is your juiciness. This is what comes to you very, very naturally. You're a natural researcher. You like to go and find out about things. You like to find out how things are done. And then you like to back it up with facts and figures. And that's what you do. You have a very rich knowledge. And as I said before, it's very valuable to your followers because you can gain trust from your audience very, very easily. So I don't ever want you to feel that it might be a bit of a waste of time to go out and do your research and do your due diligence because it will stand you in good stead with your audience. So I can imagine that you're standing there on stage or you're a guest expert on a podcast or you're writing an article and you are backing up your thought leadership with facts and figures. That instantly gives you credibility. You do the research so we don't have to. Seriously, like I am as far removed from line one that you would ever get. I don't, I like to get my knowledge from other people. So if you go out and do your research, <laughs> then you, then I can read about it and I can, I can get my knowledge that way, right? I'm not talking about my craft, obviously human design visibility, my business, then I go out and do my research on that. But other things, other things that I want to learn about, I don't, particularly get lit up with going out and finding out all the facts and figures. I am not a detailed person. And other people within your community will not be detailed person, which is why they will follow you because you will be the subject matter expert. Now, there's a couple of things that I would say to be mindful of as a line one that might hold you back, that might put a block on you moving forward and being productive within your business and actually might put a stopper on your visibility a little bit. So first of all, you might be just try and over prepare for everything. So 
Okay, let me just reword that because that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't worded very well. Sometimes with your research, and you might not know when enough is enough. So it's like I want to go out and I want to research on a subject so that I can teach a, uh, I can teach about it or talk about it. But actually, when do you know when to stop the research and when to actually go out and start talking about it? If that makes sense. So this is classic procrastination. You know what? Instead of launching my business, um, I'm just going to research about it, and I'm going to continue to research about it, and I'm just never going to get around to research to launching my business because I'm just going to keep researching it. Does that sound like you? Uh, I'm going to um, launch a product or I'm going to launch a program. Um, but first of all, I'm going to do loads of research about it. And then before you know it, you've researched for a year and you still haven't launched it. I hear this from my clients again and again <laughs> who have got line ones. They are very good at procrastinating and going out and researching. And I think that as a line one, you do need to give yourself boundaries and give yourself a time scale and then say, right, enough research. I'm actually going to go out there now and get shit done. I'm not going to research my Facebook live for 10 hours and then like make an excuse that I'm too tired to do it. Right. So it's really making sure that you do your research but not too much like you can over prepare for things and you can you can take a lot of time doing it and actually that time can be best spent in other areas of your business i.e showing up and being more visible or going to like networking events and building relationships with the communities or going out there and you know like doing other things within your business so that's the first thing and then the second thing that I see a lot of with line ones is that very often line ones can attach their self-worth to their knowledge and often feel that if they're not highly knowledgeable in an area, then they don't feel worthy of it. I don't want to discredit anyone, but immediately when I'm talking about this is you know, when I think about people that like, like are doing like years and years and years in university, like years and years and years studying, and they go off and do one qualification and then the next qualification. And actually, you can spend all your life learning something, but actually, when are you going to share it with others? When are you going to put it into action? I get a lot of clients that come to me that have just spent like they all go and do, you know, they'll train to be a coach and then get their qualifications in a coach as a coach. And then they'll go and get their qualifications in a certain area and then more qualifications and more qualifications. And as much as that knowledge is amazing, of course it is. And I would never, ever for one minute say, don't go and get qualified in a sub, you know, in an area that you want to get qualified in. Don't go and do some learning in an area that you want to get learned, that you want to be learned in, that you, oh, I don't know what's the matter with my head today. Don't go and learn in an area that you want to learn in. Like, at the end of the day, you do need to think that when is enough is enough. Like these, you know, these clients that come to me, they've spent like five years learning how to be a coach. When are you going to freaking go out there and be a coach, right? When are you going to go out there and be visible? When are you going to go out there and get into action? When are you going to go and earn some money from it instead of spending your money on another qualification that's going to hold you back from going out there and freaking living the life of your dreams, right? Get really fired up about that because I do as much as I think that qualifications are very important also is the experience of just going out there and being in practice and being in communication and serving your clients and but creating a business around it and being paid for it so that is one thing that I would definitely recommend that you look out for one of the pitfalls as a human design line one researcher at one point, you do need to go out and apply your research to, uh, you know, whatever craft or industry that you're in and go out and make some money from it and have some fun with it. In terms of your visibility, I've already alluded it to it already, but you are an incredible subject matter expert. So leverage that expertise. 
put yourself forward to be interviewed on podcasts as a guest expert. Go and speak on stage. Put yourself forward for speaking opportunities. Go and write a guest blog in a well-known magazine or publication that will leverage your visibility. Go live on social media and share your like share your knowledge, share your experience. And you will be able to elevate yourself very, very quickly, more so than other human design profiles that don't have that line one in your profile. Because that knowledge and that expertise and that subject matter expertise will come to you very quickly and very easily. If you want to know more um, about your profile within human design and your different lines within human design, I am going to be doing a live masterclass probably in a few weeks dependent on when you're watching this so if you're watching this live it's going to be taking place in a few weeks time if you're watching this it might be you know the replay this might be like 10 years into the future who knows but the best thing to do is if you go onto my website abigailrebecca.com and then scroll down to the bottom you will see that there's um, the opportunity for you to sign up for my newsletter if you do that any workshops that I have coming out on the, in the future, you will be the first to know about that. But I am going to be doing a workshop that is going to be specifically talking about human design profiles. And within that will be lots and lots of information about the different lines that I know that will help you to be more visible and confidently expressed, not only in your business, but also in your life. Okay. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. I'd love to know if you're a line one and with you, if you resonate with this and what stood out for you, please comment below. I'm very active with my comments. I, I'm a line four within hum, my human, dis, with, like my part of my human design profile is a line four, which means that I'm all about community and getting opportunities from other people. I love to be in conversation with other people. So if you want to start a dialogue conversation below, then start a conversation below and I will jump into it. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.